breathtaking new worlds where methane rivers flow into a methane sea and where jets of ice and gas are blasting material into space from a liquid water ocean that might contain the building blocks for life were revealed to us by NASA's Cassini spacecraft over the course of more than 10 years. The genuine wonders of Saturn, a massive world governed by violent storms and subtle gravitational harmonies, were made clear by Cassini in amazing detail. It shed light on the planet and its rings in startling clarity, discovered liquid everywhere, and rekindled the notion that alien life not only exists but might be nearby. What peculiar occurrences on Saturn did the Cassini spacecraft record? Let's find out! After 20 years in space, 13 of which were spent discovering Saturn, Cassini ran out of fuel. Cassini was therefore dispatched on a perilous final mission that would determine its fate in order to protect Saturn's moons that might have circumstances favorable for life. On September 15, 2017, Cassini dove into Saturn's atmosphere and returned science data after a string of nearly 20 tense dives between the planet and its ice rings. Cassini was launched on October 15, 1997, and it took six years and 261 days to reach Saturn. The sixth planet is typically 890 million miles from Earth, but Cassini traveled 2.2 billion miles to get there by taking the scenic route, orbiting the Sun to pass twice by Venus, then Earth, followed by a gravity assist maneuver at Jupiter. It was an exploration adventure like no other. The endeavor started off with a risky flight, in order to fly up through the rings and into Saturn's orbit, Cassini had to aim its radio dish away from Earth and use it as a shield to deflect any potential debris hits. In 2004, when Cassini made its initial visit to Saturn, it had another objective in mind, the large moon of Titan, one of the solar system's most beautiful locations. The enigma surrounding Titan, a moon that is bigger than the planet Mercury, dates back many years. Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens found Saturn's biggest moon in 1655. It was the sixth moon to be found, after our own and the four Jupiter-circling Galilean moons. During its 1979 visit, the Pioneer 11 spacecraft found Saturn's largest moon to be frigid, yet covered in a thick atmosphere. In 1980, Voyager 1 sailed by at a distance of around 4,000 miles from the moon to gauge the nitrogen-rich atmosphere of Titan's atmosphere and its pressure. Voyager's findings revealed that the surface of Titan could contain pathways and perhaps lakes of liquid methane, despite the fact that it was unable to see through the atmospheric haze. Cassini set out to confirm this, not just by mapping the Moon with radar equipment, but also by bringing along a companion probe. A tiny lander nicknamed Huygens, named after Titan's discoverer, and created by the European Space Agency, was launched by the mothership. Using parachutes to slow down in the dense atmosphere, the craft would land on the enigmatic moon. In January 2005, Huygens made history by performing the farthest from Earth's surface planetary landing ever. A dynamic world of ice mountains interwoven with flowing rivers of liquid hydrocarbons was visible in images taken after Huygens' landing on Titan. Large hydrocarbon oceans around the poles have been identified by years of radar and spectroscopy measurements from Cassini and an active cycle of evaporation and precipitation has also been observed. It resembles Earth, with the exception that Titan's rocks are comprised of water ice and its rain is actually liquid methane. It follows the same cycle as our planet, with a few differences here and there. According to planetary experts, Titan may currently resemble Earth billions of years ago before life developed and changed our world. If this is the case, Titan may become livable in a few hundred million years. Under the smoggy nitrogen environment, it's possible that the very earliest processes, the first primordial mixings required to spark life, are already in motion. Under the methane lakes and frozen outer crust of the enormous moon, according to scientists, there is enough energy and heat to support a liquid water ocean. It's possible that life exists right now on Titan. Some people wouldn't be shocked if we discovered a type of life on Titan that was distinct from our own. It might be made of hydrocarbons and carbon. Titan is also much colder, so any life that may survive there may need to be of a different kind. Although it seems impossible for life to exist in such harsh environments, it should not be forgotten that they can be found flourishing in the deepest parts of the ocean and even in acidic fire ponds in the desert. Thus, it is not crazy. That's how we'll put it. 
Though we need evidence and an example, it's reasonable to believe that Titan may support some kind of organic life. The possibility of life on Titan was made much more intriguing in 2017 when the Cassini team found a substance there called vinyl cyanide that had the physical characteristics needed to create cell membranes. But even within the Saturn system, Titan might not be the greatest place to look for life. Enceladus, the smaller neighbor of Titan, is only 3 14 miles wide, or 4% the size of Earth. However, this little moon captivated the attention of the entire world in 2005 when Cassini captured an incredible image of something on the frozen surface. Images from Enceladus showed geysers of water vapor, ice and other particles shooting thousands of feet into space from the moon's surface. The science group was in disbelief. Enceladus is literally ejecting water at a height of tens of thousands of feet. Therefore, visualize yourself at Yellowstone and observing a geyser that reaches the area where a jet airline is flying. Only three flybys of Enceladus, which was previously believed to be a dull ball of solid ice, were made during the original Cassini mission. The Cassini crew revised the mission's goals and flight paths when the plumes were discovered, and as a result, Cassini has now made 22 close flybys of Enceladus. By 2015, the scientists had shown that the plumes originated from a worldwide subsurface ocean, not a single warm water reservoir buried under the moon's 20 miles of frozen crust. To make sure that it would never inadvertently collide with this immaculate watery moon, the Cassini crew has the spacecraft fall into Saturn at the conclusion of the mission. Multiple passes through the plumes themselves were made during the Enceladus flybys, including one in which the spacecraft came within 30 miles of the moon's surface. Even though the geysers were unknown prior to Cassini's arrival and the spacecraft was not equipped to directly investigate these particles, scientists were nevertheless able to benefit from two tools on board. Everything that we believe to be necessary for life on Earth is present on Saturn's small liquid moon, unlike Titan. Unfortunately, Cassini lacked the equipment necessary to do the measurements necessary to search for those large molecules and signs of life. It follows that we must go back. Although Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus hold the most intrigue, Cassini has provided information on many of the 62 verified natural satellites of the gas giant. Titan, Rhea, Iapetus, Dione, Tethys, Enceladus and Mimas are the largest by radius. The majority of these planets have icy or rocky surface crusts, and some, like Rhea and Dione, may contain underground oceans akin to Enceladus. Mimas, the smallest object in the solar system known to be spherical due to self-gravitation, has a large crater that gives the tiny world a Death Star-like appearance. Iapetus features a large equatorial ridge that spans three-fourths of the way around the Moon and rises to heights of more than 12 miles, more than twice the height of Mount Everest. Iapetus itself is also two-toned, with a bright white side and a dark brown side. Many of Saturn's larger moons also have thin, wispy rings that interact with the planet's rings to exchange dust. Because of Cassini, we have a deeper understanding of Saturn's moons than we do of any other rocky planets outside of the asteroid belt. These planets' bodies contain liquids like water and atmospheres. The results have demonstrated that planets and moons can have active geology, flowing liquid, and an abundance of energy even when they are hundreds of millions of kilometers from a star. Everything that Cassini has given us suggests that there might even be life out there, hidden beneath Enceladus's icy crust or swimming across Titan's methane lakes. Of course, Saturn is most known for its vast ring system, which surrounds the planet and is made up of frozen specks ranging in size from micrometer specks, smaller than the thickness of a human hair, to boulders. The equatorial plane surrounding the planet is just 30 feet broad at most. The Saturn system, which is a kind of micro-solar system to study due to its numerous rings and moons, may hold the key to understanding how the solar system as a whole arose. The Cassini team was astonished to discover that most of Saturn's ring particles are not isolated orbs that occasionally collide with one another as they round the planet. Instead, the particles collide and group together. The normal swirl and cluster of tiny ring particles are disturbed by a few renegade objects that are circling Saturn's ring plane. Propellers are large enough to disrupt the ring particles and leave behind little spinning vortices as they move across space. The age of the dynamic ring system is a major unanswered concern. Did Saturn recently sever a moon and scatter the fragments throughout its rings? Or did they originate on the planet alongside it billions of years ago? Even if we don't know, Cassini provided some fresh hints. According to a study employing Cassini data, the rings may only be 100 million years old. 
The craft accurately measured Saturn's mass without the rings during the final Cassini dives between Saturn and its rings. The mass of the rings alone can be calculated by deducting these data from the combined mass of Saturn and its rings, which were discovered through research on the planet's magnetic field. According to the science team's analysis of these most recent Cassini findings, the rings are actually less massive than previously thought and are therefore most likely made up of the fragments of one or more torn apart space rocks. Though not what you would anticipate to find if a stony moon were broken apart to generate the rings, more than 99% of the material in Saturn's rings is water ice. And as the rings accumulate and deplete material, the puzzle is always altering. For instance, the water vapor and ice released from Enceladus directly feed Saturn's E-ring. According to one idea, a moon-like object with an icy crust on its surface came too near to Saturn, causing the outer ice to break apart in the powerful gravity and disperse throughout the rings while the rocky interior fell into the planet and vanished. The final solution might have effects that go well beyond the sixth planet. The construction of entire worlds during the formation of planets, moons and asteroids in the solar system may be better understood in light of the cosmic dance of frozen particles around Saturn that sees them coalesce into stable granola bars and then shatter apart in a flurry of mayhem. Even more elusive than its rings is Saturn itself. Saturn's rotational speed, wind penetration depth, rocky core composition, and even what Saturn is made of in its gaseous depths are all unknown. The data Cassini made of the planet's magnetic field, gravitational forces, radar fingerprints, and atmosphere during the course of its 13-year visit will enable us to start removing the outer layers of Saturn. However, throughout Cassini's stay on the planet, astronomers encountered a series of puzzling occurrences. Storms were ferocious throughout that time. One day, the spacecraft turned its camera at Saturn to capture a picture during a brief period of mission downtime. The day before, there wasn't this little storm that was just getting started. That small storm quickly developed into one of the biggest and most violent storms NASA has ever seen on Saturn. In December 2010, a vast tumbling cloud and gas mass that was broader than Earth began high in the ringed planet's northern regions. The storm appeared to follow a line of latitude as it encircled the entire gas giant. About a year after the storm started, when the head and tail collided, it vanished into the Saturnian cloud. These astrostorms, which are also known as great white spots, happen typically every three decades or once every Saturn year. Within these intense storms, rain and hail fall, creating electricity and lightning cracks inside Saturn. These great white spots generate a great deal of turbulence due to their vertical winds, which can reach speeds of 300 miles per hour or more. Similar to what you observe during a rainstorm on Earth, colossal cloud pillars grow on Saturn, but they rise 10 to 20 times higher. Using its optical and infrared mapping spectrometers, Cassini observed the storm in February 2011 and measured it. The team was shocked to discover ammonia and water ice in the upper clouds, as debris from deep within the planet was blasted to the surface during the intense lightning storm. The data provided scientists with some insight into what lies underneath the upper layers of Saturn's atmosphere. It is still unclear why Saturn builds much energy inside and then suddenly releases it during these cyclical storms. That makes the planet distinct from Jupiter and Earth, both of which constantly have a number of storms raging in their atmospheres. The structure and makeup of Saturn lead it to hold on to energy for three decades before releasing it as a chaotic ring that encircles the planet. Another surprise arrived around Saturn's summer solstice. Scientists were once again perplexed when the color of the North Pole vortex, a perplexing storm that somehow manages to keep a hexagonal structure, the North Pole hexagon, which has been active at least since Saturn's flybys by the Voyager spacecraft about 40 years ago, changed from a vivid blue in June 2013 to a faded brown, like the rest of Saturn's clouds, in April 2017. The increasing amount of sunlight that Saturn's North Pole receives as the planet moves towards the summer has something to do with the hue change. The six-sided jet stream known as a vortex is thought to prevent hazy particles from entering the hexagon. However, when the storm is repeatedly exposed to direct sunlight, the smoky haze particles within the storm revert back to a soft golden color that mimics the rest of the globe as a result of a photochemical reaction in the atmosphere. On September 15, 2017, NASA's Cassini spacecraft abruptly ended its existence after 20 years in orbit by crashing into Saturn's atmosphere and vanishing into thin air. 
Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.